Welcome back guys, this is Dwayne from Dynamic Graphics. Thank you for joining me on another one. And today we're gonna to be talking more about this beautiful machine right here and also diving into some DTF topics. There's some feedback that you guys have gotten to me that I wanna to touch on and I pray I'm able to fit it all in this video. But if not, this is what the channel's here for so we will get to that. So let's just dive right into it. So I've been checking on the forums every now and then when I get a chance and I'm seeing a lot of people, you know, new to printing or new to DTF and I kind of saw myself in them five years ago and this happened to me five years ago. Um, I came into printing not knowing too much, but I knew a good amount. You know, I did a little bit of research to understand somewhat of printing. But what blinded me was there's so many different printing, whether it's dye sublimation, sublimation, uh, screen printing, HTV, you know, even vinyl. If you're coming into printing, please do your research. There's a process to all of that. You have to know your, you know, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop. You have to get really acclimated with those to get the best prints. You, these printers are not gonna print whether it's DTF, HTV, sublimation, they're not going to print unless you learn, you know, your Illustrator, your Photoshop. Those, those things are gonna help you to get your best prints. So just cause, you know, a guy puts a picture of these beautiful shirts that he did, that's gonna take a time and process. And that means learning. So if DTF is where you wanna go and this is what you wanna do, watch a lot of videos do research call companies learn about it i'm only telling you my version right now because this is evidence to me five years ago just getting into sublimation when i first started you know like and even having that silhouette right there it, it just my mind was going all over the place i didn't know where i want to be but i can tell you ask yourself as you're getting into printing, where do you see yourself five years from now? Is this a hobby for you or this is a business for you? I've been doing this for five years now and two years ago, I was able to start my own business and be very successful at it because I knew where I wanted to be. Just make sure you have great support, decent warranty with DTF. You're never going to get the greatest warranty, but if you can get a good grade machine and some tech guys behind it that are always gonna be there for you, this game is going to be more of a happy version for you rather than you leaving out of here only having bad things to say. I'm just trying to help you guys. So now moving back on to the Muto, you guys got a little history from me. Hopefully it helps you guys. All right guys, so the transition is fully complete. Now, just to give you guys a little education on where I started with this, um, it started off with a one. I just wanted to try it in case if it didn't work, then I wouldn't, you know, go through the process and changing all of them. But I really did my homework. I knew it was gonna work. I just wanted to see how it would work. Um, these carts are made for the Muto 628. So it's not like, these were never used for anything else. Um, a lot of people used them before for Echosol um, inks, and there shouldn't be any reason why you would be able to use DTF ink. So trying it out, I started off with one cart. Then, you know, Cyan ran out, start, filled that one up and tried it. And then since I noticed that everything was going good, I just, you know, started going down the line. Now the whites, um the one liter system i wanted to talk touch on that real quick and kind of just tell you where i'm at with why i feel the one liter system is just not built for me i mean i don't know if any of you guys have a one liter setup and if you guys do and you guys have no problems then you know awesome but i, I i'm gonna tell you guys why i wasn't a big fan of the one liters uh and even for the whites. Thank God I didn't purchase them for the colors. 
And then obviously I have my two clean carts, what we touched up on before, um, just to keep this channel open. I may go fluorescent down the road, um, just debating if I want to. It's always great to keep these two open because if white was to go, I can switch it over here and not have a problem. I can get a little bit more out of the head in this machine if I just kept these two open. But since this machine's been so great, I never really had to worry about the the head or any kind of discrepancies in the head. You know, I'm, I'm still in debates. I'm, I might go fluorescent just to kind of boost a lot of my prints and, you know, images and stuff like that. So moving on, these two whites that I wanted to top, talk about with the one liters. Now, I have this one liter set up kit right here um, the pouch is not in it this is something that I took off but the reason I'm not a big fan of this is because this is set up for failure I think because I didn't realize that there was a lot of leaks coming from this cart now right there and then a big problem where it was for me is that it has to feed from this line into your machine. We all know whites play a bad part in machines sitting in areas for a long period of time. And yeah, we might be pushing this in time and time and time, but this is still gonna build up a lot of, of old white gunk in here in, in time. And it's not gonna allow you to push the full maximum of white if you have this set up for about, you know, six months, whatever, in time that's gonna build up and you're not gonna get the most out of your white. And not only that, just the leaks that I found out from this, I can't stress to you guys, just get the base model in this machine and build your carts. Um, I think that's just the way to go. It's just more direct now. You don't have to worry about cartridges. You just have to worry about ink and then the one other thing that I wanted to talk about, which was the chips. And we're going to get to that in a second. So I can't stress enough how this machine is so much of a beast with the external refillable carts and um, just being able to put your ink directly into there and not have to worry about tossing anything, at, you know, in the garbage, you know. And I know some people be like, well, they're just two, um, 220 mil yeah when you put it in there you know what i mean um but you're able to now refill whenever you want so that's the thing to think about guys i wouldn't stress to you guys how important that is and why i would stay away from these with this machine i just think this is a big mess and a big problem down the road for any machine so moving on the chips we have here um I got a couple questions from a, um, some good friends on uh, the forums and, you know, the channel. Um, and they wanted to know more about the longevity on these. Now, I do not have the exact time when these will give you an invalid, um, you know, error down the road and need to be switched out. If you are in talks with STS and you are purchasing this machine, they were great enough to send me um, colors for my uh, for my machine. So I have uh, cleaning carts right here, I have colors right here, and then I have whites right here. And it's not just to say just to use these for refillable carts. In time, sometimes, because I've had to call STS on this, one of these chips may fail on you and you may get an error on your machine. And Trust me, I'd rather this error rather than you tell me that, you know, something went on with the head of my machine, it's clogged. And that's nothing what this machine does. This machine is top tier. I love it. And that's why I bought the home unit after having my business unit. But this error that I got was just a simple fix because, because you know, STS sending me extra chips, uh, he had told me just switch out the chip and um, put a new chip in, same color, into the, the machine, and then boom, simple fix, machine was ready to go. So it's great to have these as a backup. 
I can't stress this enough. If you guys are having that feeling where you guys don't know um, and you guys are scared about the chips, it's okay. Just, you know, ask for um, some extras or purchase extras if you already have the unit and it's a little too late to ask for it. Just purchase it. Like I said, had sent me a couple extras so I have enough on hand to, you know, cycle through if I need to. So hopefully that helps you guys and, you know, and understanding more about that. If you guys have any questions, like I said, drop it in the comments below. So if you guys need any information on these chips, I can point you in the right direction. I know about two companies that have these chips. I haven't had an issue for six months on my home unit and I'm still using the original ones from when I purchased the system. So that goes a lot way to say, um, but yeah, so stay away from those guys. All right, guys, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today. It was more for you guys on the feedback you guys gave me on wanting to know some more about this machine. Hopefully I answer a lot of you guys questions. I like to do things visually. If you have a question, then I'll take you guys in the shop and kind of point things out and talk more about it in depth. That way you guys got a visual idea. I didn't even get to touch on half the stuff I wanted to today, but it's OK. This is why we have the channel, so we'll add it in the next video. Next video, we're going to be talking about ink and ink supply. It's a very important topic and you guys should look out for that one. So next video, we're going to be doing the prints and we're going to be doing the ink and the ink supply talk. And if you guys have any more questions, you guys can always ask, like I said, on the comments below. I'll try to get to it as best as I can, as busy as I am, but we'll get to it. This is Dwayne from Dynamic Graphics. I appreciate you guys watching. And until the next video, guys, peace.